All right. There we go. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm actually in Amsterdam at the moment, a hotel room with dubious Wi-Fi connection. So if I somehow drop in the middle of this, please uh, hang tight. I'm going to try to get back in as I can. The agenda uh, you should now have there. Amsterdam, yes. That's my reference. Um, I don't have a lot of updates uh, that go beyond just what's going on with the projects, mainly in the last few I've been doing work uh, with you all. Um, uh, I have been writing up a document that's related to the Hive plots that we got out, um, which is pretty interesting. If you want to know more about that, feel free to um, send me a note. But um, I'm trying to get a decent explanation of what's happening in there. Um, got some uh, those results uh, with the uh, interneurons that were really high actually turn out so they seem to be real. So uh, they have a lot of connections. So it's pretty cool. Anyway. Um, but on the uh, on the topics, just want to remind everybody that we still have milestones on GitHub that people are looking at and having fun with, having a play with. Um, so don't forget those um, as they as they load up. Um, I know that uh, they're being closed as we go. I think a lot of good progress is being made, but uh, <clears throat> just another pitch out to have a look at them and uh, and use them as the basis of, of the work that you're doing. All right, um, Open Worm Wiki still exists, still in need of love. We still have not closed down Google Code um, because this is not all fully moved over. So if you have a little silver time to make sure that your thing is in there um, over the next couple weeks, please do. Um, and let's see. Uh, so the Hangout with John White is happening tomorrow. Um, so I have Matteo and Giovanni as confirmed as being in the channel. Um, are any of you wanting to be in the channel live? Because I, I can probably fit you in um, if you want to if you want to be there. But you'll need to show up about forty five minutes early just as a tech as a tech check to make sure that you're available. So is there anybody who wants to be participating in that hangout? Who is here now? Um, yes. Can you, you want to be in? <laughs> sorry. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, yes, I will probably. Sorry. Okay. There's a little bit of an echo. I think we can get Matteo before I get back. It's the pole perfect. It makes you sound very dramatic. I have. You have your microphone muted there. Sound like the Pope. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, there is still a bit of an effort. Um, I will. I. Yes. How about? I... Hello. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> Might be better. Um, okay. So uh, I will try to um, attend, but I can't um, uh, join too early because. Um, there's a visitor in the lab tomorrow, so but I will try to come along. Um, so no, basically. Okay. Um, well, I will send I will send you an invite then. We are gathering everybody together in sort of a green room hangout in advance, um, just because I don't want people kind of popping in and out um, during the actual session, just because it's sort of disruptive. And we're going to try to do introductions at the beginning. So um, if you're not in 15 minutes prior, I think. Um, you feel free to comment on the stream, and we can get your questions in that way. But um, just to make sure, we have to make sure like all the technical things are resolved, and microphones, and cameras, and all that stuff. So um, if you can make it in 15 minutes before to the green room, great. Um, otherwise, um, next time. OK. Anybody else? All right. That's good. All oh, right. Now I'm remembering what the plan is. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this at UCL, so it'll actually make that easier. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot the whole plan. Um, okay. Well. How long this is. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah, but even then, with the some logistics about like multiple cameras and stuff, because uh, I want to be sure that you know, we don't have echoes and stuff. Yeah. So. All right. Anyway, we can talk about it more tomorrow. But. Where is John White joining? 
to hang out from? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but from the computer that I set him up with Google Hangout, I'm hoping. Um, I think I talked to him from outside, somewhere outside Cambridge before uh, when we did the first technical test, but I'm not 100% sure where I was going to be uh, for that one, so we'll find out. But uh, okay, good. But I'm glad you're. I'm glad. Glad you're. So glad you're excited. Uh, now that I remember the UCL thing, obviously I think it'll be easier to get you in. But um, just have to make sure that. Okay, good. Anybody else? Only once. All right, good. I think uh, so. Just some other folks that are confirmed. Steve Cook will be in the meeting. Um, I think we're gonna have. Somebody from Sebastian Sung's lab uh, that are doing Connectomics. I don't think Sebastian himself necessarily, but uh, but one of his uh, one of the folks in his team uh, to provide some some other context, which would be cool. And um, I don't know if I lose anybody else. In. Oh yes, another C. Elegans researcher uh, at UCSD, graduate student who's doing computational work. Um, so we've got a, a good group outside of us. But um, it should be fun. And uh, I'm sure I will have a wonderful presentation ready for you. Uh, <laughs> OK. Uh, so moving on. Um, so you're not sleeping. You're not sleeping tonight. <laughs> ah, it's easy. It's only 452 pages, the paper. Ah, yeah. So you know, easy to summarize. Anyway, all right, let's, uh, let's turn attention to uh, the rest of you folks. So no Sergey here yet. So we'll skip down to Ivanik. Let's do. Okay. Um, can you put on the agenda on your on your screen? Oh, you want me to put the agenda on? Yeah, just so that it shows up in the stream. Um, so okay. Basically, I spent all my time the last two weeks working on the ASPH porting, and there was a bit of a breakthrough that if you look at the actual um, fix for the crash that we were experiencing, uh, it won't look like a breakthrough because just <laughs> I, a line of code that changed, but it, it was very challenging to, to find it because it was an issue on the... Uh, and Mike knows about this and I'll be Matteo helped find this. Uh, so basically it, it was down to an issue on, on something that it was not happening on this on the um, on the C plus plus version. And I don't even know that it's the C uh, pro probably the C plus plus has nothing to do with it because it's uh, it's probably more uh, platform dependent. So drivers and platform because that's the CL code that runs on the device. So it has nothing to do with the with the plus probably. Uh, but it might because maybe some values were, were being passed down that were uh, behaving differently. So anyway, I mean, uh, basically the, the fix was just making sure that a given array was not being accessed with a negative index that index should have never been negative looking at the code because it's basically a distance multiplied by some other positive number and it looks like that particular distance was, was negative and that's never happening in the in the original implementation that Andre and Sergey worked on but <laughs> for some reason it was happening on Mac uh, so basically I just imposed a condition on the index greater than zero and it stopped crashing. And I was able to, to see that uh, sometimes it was uh, negative indeed. And the reason why it was difficult to find out is that, uh, first of all, it's OpenCL code. It's not uh, exactly easy to debug. We tried to set up the debugger, uh, spent a few hours, it didn't work. So I basically went, went back to the old uh, school method of removing code and see if it still breaks. And by doing this uh, kind of uh, uh, manual debug, I was able to narrow it down to the, to the block of code that was causing the crash. And then just looking at the code and some printfs basically managed to 
find the line and basically like it's one of those things that when you look at it, it shouldn't it shouldn't happen but it's happening so the fix looks silly but it actually was fairly challenging to to resolve it and so that what, what it means is that once that's fixed and uh, basically the SPH ported version now works okay with the uh, with liquid matter, there are some performance issues, and I'm not sure. Uh, I would like to try the same thing on another machine uh, uh, and see how it fares in terms of performance. But I mean, I'm not worried about the performance itself; that they can always get improved. But I'm really happy to say that finally it works with liquid matter. Now I'm working to. To include uh, basically the code for the Elastic uh, stuff is already imported, uh, but it hasn't been tested because I'm basically waiting for Sergey to put together a script that shows me how to generate an, an Elastic scene. And so basically, I was waiting for that, but I have seen now that Andre has in, introduced some new code in the, in the C version. Uh, so maybe I can look at that. Um, uh, so basically, that, that's I'm, uh, on the on the agenda. You can see that I'm linking. There's a number of uh, open issues that are still open on that side, such as uh, make sure that it works both on CPU and GPU. Because at the moment, for some reason, it's not working on GPUs for us. Um, so there's a bunch of things that still need to be uh, looked into, but it is progress. There's like last two two weeks uh, were a bit of a nightmare just for chasing after that particular bug. So maybe that got resolved and now I'm looking forward to do the rest. So that, that's pretty, pretty much all I did and uh, that's pretty much everything from me. Well bravo dude. That is uh yeoman's work. <laughs> uh, I know everybody has gotten in on that, but uh in terms of the uh SPH bug fixing, but uh, that's really great. And so it's extremely exciting. It is. It was a relief. Who's next? Cool. All right. So, uh, Mike. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. OK, so these past two weeks, I worked quite a bit on SPH. I did some benchmarking of the C++ SPH implementation and I had some questions and points for Sergey which um, which you might have have read in the email thread hopefully he finds them useful I also worked uh, I I assisted Giovanni <clears throat> with some of the um, SPH stuff that he in his diagnosis of the of yes. the bug which he's now fixed Thanks for that. And I've also been working on libneuroml. Uh, libneuroml is now at a nice stable state. Uh, we're now thinking of Podrick and I, and some some other people are now thinking of um, writing this up, writing that work up in a publication. Um, a couple couple of loose ends to tie up as usual, but it's a it's a very nice it's a very nice usable state right now. Um, <clears throat> and obviously that's all. That's all going to tie into um, pyramidal, which, when that is done, will itself be very useful for continuing to work on the muscle model. And that's it. Cool. Very good. All right. The agenda window continues. <laughs> um, all right. How about Matteo? Okay, will be short for me. I didn't have uh, much time in the past two weeks to basically uh, do anything for open world, bar uh, one day that I had uh, a little bit. Joe and I fixed uh, an issue on the not on my page as much, but on the front end. So basically, there was um, there was a bug that when there were not values coming back from the server, there were basically no times that being processed because 
it is something that we experience for the first time uh, through SPH that basically every time step at the moment currently is taking four seconds. So the front end wasn't receiving anything. There was no new material for the front end to be displayed in in between those four seconds break. But there was some bug that was basically still sending uh, uh, stuff to the front end and was messing it up. And that's why the visualization was broken. So uh, I just had fixing that bug, but otherwise uh, I'm working mostly on a new release of open source brain, which in the next weeks, you know, it's more important that it's going to be in. Improvement? Looking good so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, my plan is, uh, so uh, at the moment we're starting testing this new version, and uh, the more stable it becomes in the next week or two, the more I will switch back to LAMPS, which is uh, what's going to be my focus for the next month, two months, well, whatever it's going to take <laughs> in order to get LAM, the JLAMPS to work uh, through the API and then to get it integrated with Gepetto so that we can have in browser a single compartment simulation Oops. at the beginning for that, at the very least. So now that I'm completing the other work with OSP, I will be able to gradually switch and start working more and more on that. Cool. All right. And uh, how about Andre? Um, it was a number of uh, kits, commits, um, fixing uh, some bugs and uh, introducing new features. But I think one of the most uh, recent and important thing I will try to uh, show right now sharing the screen. I will try. simulation. Oh. Well, let's give you a minute to look through that. Um, maybe skip to four. Is, uh, is it uh, possible to see it? Seems to be a something. white window on top of it. Oh, very, very, oh. So, as we can see, there was initial integration of even some uh, liquid and some uh, object uh, made of elastic matter. But uh, this is not so uh, simple as it uh, looks for the first time. Um, as you can see, uh, the general uh, color uh, is yellow as usual, but there are red uh, lines which uh, show, which display the threads uh, or the springs or connections which uh, can uh, finally uh, contract. Uh, so this is the first prototype of uh, the muscle, not muscle cell, but some muscle fibers. Uh, 
grouped into this. Um, so as you can notice, uh, there is a, a what, first, second, third, third line uh, of white text, uh, which uh, so the text is muscle uh, activation signal. Currently, it's uh, set to zero, but is uh, pressing uh, K A. I will uh, force it to wait, and it will uh, start the contraction. So this is our limit. That's awesome. Now I will. Now I uh, release the key and it will uh, start the relaxation process. That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> well, I was going to finish the work with a um, more correct uh, relaxation process, um, so which it should remove uh, oscillations which will now take place. So to add uh, more... Uh, yeah, so you need some sort of a damping, a damping coefficient or something, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we, we see uh, oscillations with uh, amplitude uh, which is uh, making it lower and lower, but um, this process should well, we shouldn't see this. Um, uh, well, uh, I will try to reformulate. Um, if I understand correctly, the real muscle should not uh, oscillate after the signal uh, has uh, stopped uh, to activate it. Um, and it should just uh, take back the initial uh, relaxed form. Um, but should not uh, become longer uh, because uh, it was uh, stretched and then began to expand. Um, I will tell it better in the text form when I will describe the new commit and so on. Well, that's all. But now we uh, have all this. Um, code which allows us to uh, generate such configurations automatically uh, and uh, to have uh, construct, uh, constructions um, to keep data sets of this uh, data and operate with them. Can you, uh, can you do it again? <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> Uh, thing of beauty. <laughs> well, I will prepare some video and download it to YouTube. Awesome. Let me hook that up with the electrophysiology. <laughs> Ah, oh, beautiful. <laughs> It's really, really beautiful. Nicely done. All right. It's running okay. on your CPU, right, Andre? I'm just trying to read the what yes. is above. Oh yes. Okay. And uh, have we tried the uh, on GPU? Just think uh, I, I'm thinking about. It should work, uh, because. Um, in the last period, uh, for last uh, two, two weeks, uh, not uh, <laughs> uh, these two weeks, but previous two weeks, um, th that time was spent to fix uh, all the bugs um, and also those which um, caused uh, wrong uh, behavior on GPU. So now CPU and GPU solutions uh, work uh, identically. So, uh, but we have not tested it yet. Oh, sorry? But we have not tested it yet. Oh, 
I yeah, have. I was just curious. Yet. I think I think that Sergey did. I think that Sergey tested both, as far as I know. Yes, he told me. Um, well, yeah, right now at home, I don't have a GPU at all. So I cannot uh, uh, run it. Yeah. Sure. No uh, settings. But tomorrow I can find out it on. I have Tesla on, in my office on, in the institute. Great. So I'll check. Andre. Yes. This is really fantastic. Congratulations! It's a uh, you you both you and uh, Sergey. It's a fantastic achievement. I'm extremely impressed. Uh, obviously. Now, um, <clears throat> the next stage, which I'm really looking forward to, is um, integrating with electrophysiology, which is obviously integrating with the muscle model, which we already have. Um, I have s several thoughts about this, so we should start to discuss how we're going to do this in the coming days. Um, so I'll obviously be in touch. Um, unfortunately, well, I'm going on holiday until the 1st of April, but uh, from tomorrow, but when I come back, uh, I'm really determined to work a lot on this now because it's it's uh, really reaching a a very cool stage now. Um, obviously, there's going to be the integration, and then there's going to be having different compartments interacting in different ways, and all sorts of exciting exciting things we can pursue. So I'm really excited. Hey, Andre. Um, is this the current version that's on GitHub? Um, no, I have not uploaded it yet because mm -hmm. I'm still working on. Well, I have an idea how to make a uh, more correct uh, relaxation process, um, and I was going to finish it uh, before our meeting will start. But. Mm -hmm. um, um, have not uh, done it. Yet. Yeah, yeah. But is it? It's based on the current version that's on, on GitHub, right? So you just uh, built on top of that. Um, well, current version contains changes which I have induced during the last three, three days. So I'll better upload it uh, mm -hmm. today after the meeting, so you can see the most recent okay. sources. Perfect. Thanks. Awesome. Andre? Really cool. So this, I mean, it's visual, so we can see it. It's not any. It's not any more important than making sure that these things run on various platforms, as Giovanni has done, and fixing you know the bug crashes, as Matteo has done, and doing the important integration work that uh, Mike talked about. However, uh, there's just something about seeing it, you know, working. Visually, that uh, just takes my breath away in terms yeah. of uh, you know reminding me how we're moving towards uh, our vision um, every day, every every time we meet. So um, it's extremely exciting, Andre and Bravo, um, for getting it there. So, Thanks. Andre, yes. could you give a brief description of how it works, please? Oh uh, yes. Oh. Uh, of uh, uh, fibers uh, or springs uh, can, um, springs which uh, unite particles uh, in one direction uh, marked with red um, they are special they can contract uh, this means uh, that uh, when calculating forces uh, for these uh, pairs, I and J pairs of uh, particles um, connected with the red uh, spring, uh, additional external force is applied. Uh, well, there is a, a line uh, connecting these two particles. Uh, and uh, the direction uh, is uh, one particle towards another, forces are equal, uh, and um, they are proportional to uh, 
the um, activity of uh, signal, which is based on how much uh, you press the key uh, at the keyboard, uh, which activates uh, the signal. So just signal comes, uh, we multiply it by some coefficient, and then uh, apply uh, forces uh, to a pair of particles, which uh, should contract, and it uh, happens. And it's it's all the particles in a line that are each individually contracting in a chain, right? It's not some contraction from one end to the other end of the muscle fiber? No. Uh, only uh, adjacent pairs. So if I, if I were to take a digital knife and chop the block like along some diagonal line, the rest yes, could still yes. contract, right? There Basically. will be two uh, shorter parts of muscle right. which will still contract. Right. How does that uh, translate to the biology? I mean, I, this is like, I'm exposing my ignorance, but why do, what is the physical, pro, uh, the biological process that makes uh, muscle cells contract in biology, and how does it translate to, to this we implementation? Out, we put out a blog post on this, but I'll let, I'll let Andre explain. Well, I know how biologically the muscle works. Uh, there is quite complex molecular um, mechanisms underlying this. But, of course, uh, this implementation has not much in common with this. And, um, well, uh, I don't know. Uh, exact uh, formulas or laws uh, which um, describes um, in details the um, physics of the forces uh, generated by those molecular um, uh, processes. Uh, possibly uh, they make some uh, other physics, um, well, no, some other dependence of uh, between force uh, and signal, maybe nonlinear or something quite complex. Well, I I would prefer to read something about this, um, but. This uh, simple version should be created to make um, something more complex. Uh, start, start starting from it. Um, so this is it. Okay. I just uh, I just posted the blog post ah, uh, yes. there. There's a video attached to it, which uh, is a nice job graphically of describing the process, but. Pairwise, pairwise, yeah, pairwise interactions of particles is no bad um, approximation. So, you yeah, can check it out. Okay. All right. Very cool. All right, let's go onwards. Um, so let's see. Alex is not here. I can represent uh, really quickly what he's doing. Let me get back to you. Yeah, so we met um, last week and continued to work with these new data videos. So he actually he has extracted the uh, calcium signal trace from the .mat file contributed to us by Andrew Reaper, and then we worked out a plan with Mike um, where he was, where Andrew was going to work on um, dividing out the noise uh, from the signal uh, using um, another signal in the .mat file that shouldn't change. And, um, and then we're having a look at um, how we can then use that signal that's coming out to help uh, help train up maybe an ABA neuron model. So he's um, 
so he's on to that at the moment. And uh, we'll see where he gets. I think he's going to send an update maybe a little bit later. I think he sent me an email saying he was going <coughs> to. Let's move along. Uh, Tim, thanks for joining. You're up. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it looks like I came in at the right time, too. Absolutely. Good timing. You see on... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I, I... Basically, I put everything into... Um, um, into a SQL 2012 uh, database. Uh, I will have a MySQL uh, representation of that same data here this, this coming week. Uh, but it, it just basically, what I'm trying to do is break down the data into components. So I'll share my desktop. Yeah. So as context, this is, this, is a, this is a strategy for taking all the data which is spread across spreadsheets and consolidating it into one master database, uh, which I think is actually really good uh, when it's ready. Um, hopefully, we can source the spreadsheets back out of the database in order to have like a consolidated system. But keep keep going, Tim. So uh, I'm assuming you can see the spreadsheet I have in front of me. This is a spreadsheet we created uh, about a month or so ago, and and the thing here to note, okay, so we have a neural like ADL, ADAL, and we have the neurotransmitter and neuropeptides and exons um, and, rece and receptors. But it's all into a cell here on, on the spreadsheet. It's not broken out by individual pieces and parts. So what I did is I, I took that data and actually created a database representing that same data, but breaking it out into its individual components. This is a spreadsheet representing that same data. So like if we go to ADFL, we can see the neurotransmitter, serotonin, what neuropeptides are involved here. It's repetitive, by the way. Uh, the annexins and the individual receptors. This way we can get that information and use it to our benefit as we as we move forward so it's broken down into its individual components. And that's what I've been hoping. Very cool. So um, let us know how that goes. And then have you had any chance to look at the NeuroConstruct stuff? Uh, I because I've been working on that. I, I haven't had. I, I've played around with it a tiny bit, but I haven't really gotten back to it, which I will this coming week. Okay, okay, that's fair. Very good. So I'm excited to see that uh, that uh, database structure progress and be uh, able to have that together. And then I think we can start thinking about some of the other semantic ways of querying that database structure. But I think the database structure will be more reusable anyway for more people um, once once that's there. Um, right, and, that, and that's where I got down to that level because I was trying to represent this data, but it's like, okay, well, I need the actual components of it, not just a, a cell with all the information. In it. Yeah, right. Very good. Okay, so um, Sergey's not here. Porg. Okay. Um, so in the last few days, I did manage to get around to looking at the NeuroConstruct project. Um, there is a an issue in GitHub, which I haven't updated yet, but uh, I have made some commits to the NeuroConstruct project itself. So um, the main thing I've done to that is um, add a simulation configuration, which can just generate the, um, if you can see that. Yes. OK. So basically, it just generates the um, uh, nine cells, the eight cells, the eight motor neurons that are connected to the muscle cell, and uh, the um, muscle cell itself. So the kind of approximation in a. Oh, so 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 Korg's done all the work. Yeah, that's well, that's what you're just asking me about. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, the um, okay. So it's basically, random connectivity with the correct numbers, hopefully. Uh, between those motor neurons and the mus muscle cell, so they're basically randomly connected along this. Um, um, randomly connected along the muscle cell. Um, one of the issues I found there was that some of them. Okay, so there's obviously a an area here. A little bit to navigate, um, but there's an area here 
uh, where I assume most of the connections from the motor neurons are going to actually contact the muscle cell. And so some of those have axons in that region, but some of the other cells have axons in, for example, down. I don't know if you can actually see where my arrow is. Possible to see at the bottom? Yep. Okay. Yes. So some of these other cells that claim to have axons in other locations. So it might be worth looking at those individual cells. Uh, I don't know whether worm base or anything else has specific details on which parts of the cells are axons, which parts of the cells are dendrites. Yeah, it's a little ambiguous because some of these are polymodal cells and they don't obey any, um, some, of the, just some of the rules. Um, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, even, I mean, it, it also obviously brings into question even whether the concept of connecting from an axon to a muscle cell or defining a region as an axon is um, sensible, but um, we can refine this over time. So, basically, that is in the NeuroConstruct project now. It will generate those um, randomly, but obviously, the longer term plan is to pull those from a spreadsheet representation uh, where the specific locations on the presynaptic cell and postsynaptic cell uh, might be entered into the spreadsheet. Um, but probably for now, the uh, approximate locations will be sufficient. Yeah, that's awesome. This is, this is that so, um, I think the. There is also a version of this, um, if, I, if I share another screen. Um, it's, it's actually online. You should be able to view it on the Chrome browser now. So if you... Right, so... So uh, that can be viewed in the uh, open source brain visualizer. Um, it doesn't have the connections yet, but that's on a list of these. Uh, but eventually, uh, it should be possible to view the locations of these connections and find out where everything oh, sorry. is on I, the. I missed how you got there. Sorry. How did you how did you get there to um, just seeing the uh, this configuration? It's another network. It's another network. Yeah, sorry, it's another network file. So if you go, you work it out as another network file. Okay. Yeah. So now there are two network files for the three D Explorer. Oh, so I see. I see. I see. Okay. Sorry, I missed that part. Yeah. There's a link in the um, a link in the chat as well. Ah, oh, perfect. So. Yes, that's basically what I've done, but I still need to look at the options of uh, putting in the um, pulling from the spreadsheet, just checking from uh, the spreadsheet where the locations are. But as I say, um, what's there at the moment, uh, they're fairly close. I would say that if you run this in Neuron, it will do something almost, it, it won't matter functionally that much whether they're in the exact location or whether they're a little bit away from it. What will matter much more is the kind of passive properties of the cells, the channels on the cells, channels on the, mo on the uh, muscle cell, and that's all up for grabs at the moment. Right. Perfect. But this is like a manageable set, I think, to work with. So I feel great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. That's very helpful. All right. Good. Well, um, while you were while you were talking, you actually reminded me of a couple other uh, updates actually that I probably should have made at the top. Um, so let me go back to my screen. Um, so the first is that folks are uh, forking uh, our projects. Um, so if you look through the news feed um, of of OpenWorm, you can see that folks are uh, forking the SPH uh, project. And if you go down farther, folks have actually forked the muscle model as well. Um, and I don't know these folks, so it, it's always good when uh, people are kind of coming in from outside and finding this stuff and, and playing around with it. So I encourage you to, to check those um, those forks out, and you know maybe they don't do anything, but uh, you know maybe eventually the more folks who start doing it, um, 
maybe eventually they will. Um, it's another call and, and reminder for all of us to make sure that we've documented all of this very well, because I think the better documented it is, the more likely it is to get forked, and getting forked should be viewed as a virtue. The other one, um, as you were showing in NeuroConstruct, is that earlier in the week, um, we, we noted that uh, somebody had decided to create a tutorial in Spanish, again with the Spanish, um, on OpenWorm and specifically on using NeuroConstruct to load up uh, OpenWorm. So uh, this gentleman here, uh, Kato, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, um, wrote this blog up here and talks about the project and then has a 15-minute movie that uh, walks people um, through uh, the whole process of going to the site and getting a hold of the NeuroML, the NeuroConstruct, and running it and, um, and playing around with it. So um, I'm always happy to see this. Um, again, I did not uh, solicit this. I'm always happy to see these unsolicited um, uses of the project. Um, and it all means that we are doing our jobs and getting folks to, to play with this. So you know, we should have this as our target for everything that we do. We should have lots of anonymous people picking up on it, writing tutorials for us. Um, and that will be the measure, I think, of um, how well we're ensuring that this stuff is actually reusable outside of our, outside of our digital walls. So that's very cool. Um, by the way, if you want to get to this, um, well, I can, I can also post it here um, in the chat. But um, uh, it's um, all on the Twitter feed uh, if you want to check it out. OK, um, let's see. Does anybody want to comment on, on any interactions with Sergey in the last uh, period? Um, I gave him some feedback on SPH, as I discussed earlier. I think that was quite useful to him. Um, <clears throat> he was quite responsive, which is great. Cool. I'm waiting uh, from Sergey uh, for the script to generate the scenes. I haven't heard in a while. I don't know if Android knows anything, but um, we, are, we have a discussion on GitHub, so it's fine. But basically, I, I want to integrate the Elastic Matter in the Java version of the Mechanics uh, SPH solver. And uh, in order to do that, I need to know how to generate an Elastic scene. So Sergey was going to work on the script um, that shows an isolation how to generate generate the elastic. I, again, I repeat that I, I've seen that uh, Andre has introduced some new code last week on the C++ uh, repository. So maybe that's the same logic that Sergey would use for the script. And I'm waiting uh, to confirm that with Sergey uh, on GitHub, but. Maybe I can start use, looking at that code instead of waiting for the script. But uh, that's my update in terms of interaction. Okay. Anybody else? Cool. Well, I've just seen two really cool things visualized here. I've seen muscle fibers moving, and I've seen a sub-circuit of uh, neuromel neurons with uh, um, a, a muscle placeholder. And now I just want you all to imagine in your mind's eye that these two are combined, and that we have the dynamics of those neurons, those motor neurons, flowing into that muscle, and that muscle bending. And I guess eventually we should have also in our minds that the entire structure is actually uh, flexing around it. So. This is our charge, gentlemen. This is where we are going. And all the things that we've talked about today are all in service of getting there. And we are, we are making that progress. So um, stay excited. Stay hungry. We, uh, every time we do this, we chip off a little piece off this block. Um, and now it, it's, it's always exciting to kind of get us, get us closer there. But we've got to have, gotta have the synaptic connections. We've got to have the database. We've got to have the software uh, platforms working correctly. We've got to get the bugs fixed. Right, got it. And we have to have all that working in concert. Um, but I hope that you all see the big picture uh, that we're all uh, shooting for here. And um, I just uh, continually excited by all the progress that we get out of here. So uh, thanks again to all of you for the the reschedule. I apologize for that. I do not uh, do that lightly or um, or 
choose to do that often, so I will avoid that as much as possible. Um, I appreciate those of you who can show up, those who can't, obviously, be watching on the video. But, um, but thank you again for that. Um, so we will do this again in two weeks uh, at the other regular time. And um, obviously, we will be in touch online until then. So does anybody have anything else uh, before we head off? No, just I'm very excited right now. Good. All right. <laughs> well, don't take your laptop with you on your trip, or you just might be tempted to, uh, you know, to be hacking away on this in, the, in between whatever party. I, I might end up coding on my phone at the moment. <laughs> very good. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks so much. Um, really excited, and uh, I wish you all in good time. Okay. Thanks. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah, bye.